or according to St. Mark. We are reading from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 2 to 16. At that time, Pharisees came up, and in order to test, Jesus asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to put her away. But Jesus said to them, For your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh, what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about his, this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another, commit adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them laying his hands upon them. The Gospel of our Lord. Today, as we said in the introduction, we come to the end, <clears throat> right for speaking, of our 31 days novena. And as usual, we always close our, our novena with the masses, and therefore this is the second closure mass. And the theme for tonight is speaking the truth in love, speaking the truth in love. Today, as we come to the closure of our 31 days prayer journey, we are invited to reflect on the significance and importance of the institutions of marriage and family. Both are essential institutions founded on genuine love for the sustenance of humanity. 
No wonder, from the beginning of creation, and we will hear this um, the other Sunday, it's about doing things well. And that from the beginning, God intended that everything must be done well. He did intend that even our families are made well. Both family and marriage are essential institutions. Now, unfortunately, in our time, these essential institutions are under very serious threat. So, it is important to note that whatever threatens marriage, whatever threatens the family life, threatens love, unity, and the entire human existence. We can say that again. That whatever threatens marriage, whatever threatens family life, automatically threatens love, threatens unity, and threatens the entire human existence. Marriage plays the dual role. First, it serves the affection between couples and the sustenance of humanity through procreation. Tonight, both our first reading and the gospel strongly calls us to uphold the sanctity of marriage and family life. They both remind us that marriage is instituted by God. So, it must be cherished and protected. However, it is important to note that it has its own challenges. These can be overcome through the grace of God and good Christian virtues from both sides. Marital problems, however, should be involved and resolved mutually and with a godly intent to make amends, not to break. Oftentimes, we think that the best way to resolve the problems associated with marriage is divorce. In fact, divorce does not solve the problem that is in marriage because, unfortunately, uh, whatever existed is never erased. In fact, even in death, because we will remember that he was married to so-and-so, Mwenyari Kufa Kitabo. So even if there is separation of the, or, or divorce or there is death, that reality alone is never taken away. And we say that is the, the springboard on which every marital discord should be solved. Now, this might seem a good and fast solution. However, it is, of course, not always uh, the case. Today's readings remind us that, that it is not the will of God for any sacramental marriage to be broken. This is what we have read. This is why a man must leave his father and mother and join himself to his wife, and they become one body. So what God has united, man must not divide. Now, I want to, to do some kidogo grammar here uh, for those who may feel excluded. The word man in this context is inclusive. When you go to the any dictionary and you check the word man, the very, first, the very first meaning of the word man is humanity. And then the, the other one, we can, go to, we can do the male agenda. I, I'm saying that because somebody asked me, a father, the Bible says that uh, 
the man must leave his father. Kwa hivyo, so women don't leave. They are still married at, they are still at home. Uh, of course, there is uh, some, some casual explanation to that. Eh? And we may not be able to be uh, so theological there. Because, casually, nani ya naedewa? Kasha nani ya naedewa? So who leaves kuedea mwigine? So what happens to the wife? Anaokotwa? <laughs> Anaedewa? Alafu wa kiedewa? <laughs> Akiedewa kunaedaji? Na akiedewa akatae? Uh, that is where we use three words. The first one is leaving, kutoka, clinging, kushikiria, and leaving ya L-I, kuishi. Kutoka, kushikiria, na kuishi. That is leaving, clinging, and leaving. To both, they leave because they are forming a completely new family and to start another set of generational lineage. For our marriages to remain strong, now that both have left, we say, although we said that there are enemies to our marriages and family, Whenever there is an enemy, of course we fight the enemy. So we say that for marriages to work, men and the women in those marriages must be prepared to work for them. We always say that when something is done, something happens. When nothing is done, nothing happens. It is the duty of the husband and wife to both work for their marriage. And here we say, and I would want to be very categorical here, that when it comes to working for them on, them, on your marriage, prayer alone is not enough. You cannot just be praying for your marriage from morning to evening. And there are some things that need to be fixed. That which needs to be fixed must be worked towards that. And that is why we say it is important that uh, the husband and wife are of the same viewpoint. There is a disease we call in marriage, Jerusalem Jericho paradigm. Jerusalem Jericho paradigm, uh, biblically speaking, you know, that people who are going to Jerusalem, they were going for sacrifice and worship. People who are going to Jericho, they were going to the market. That is why there is nobody when you repeat wa geta, wakati wa bibiria, akieda Jerusalem. Because they were only carrying bread and water. People going to Jeru Jericho had money. Because they were going to the market. And by the way, I was in, Jer uh, I was in Jericho. In the, and even today, Jericho is a very rich town. Uh, you even see the lifestyle of the people there and uh, how they roll to work. It has never stopped. So even then, the problem ha happens when the husband or the wife, each one, either of them is facing Jericho and the other one is facing Jerusalem. At that point then, they can't move together because what happens is that they, they defy the first principle of marriage. And the first principle of marriage states that we do not get married on account of where we are, but we get married on account of where we are going. Aha. Uh -huh. We do not get married on account of where we are, but we get married on account of where we are going. That is the first of the 14 principles of marriage. That means the first thing that must be done is to establish where are we going. And once that is established, then whatever happens, then the couples can be able to work on their marriage. 
allow me tonight to suggest to you some 12 Ps that helps a couple to work on their marriage so that as we pray, something is happening. P number one is partnership and companionship. Partnership and companionship. This is, of course, based in uh, Genesis 2.18. Did you know, biblically speaking, we are created by a community to live in a community. Created by a community to live in a community. And therefore, when later now, the, when, when marriage is concocted, it is concocted to be lived in a society. And that is why we say, culturally and strictly speaking, when one young woman is married, the whole of her clan and the whole of the clan of the man, they are the ones coming together. If we give off our daughter to marriage, that is our child. And her welfare is our business. When our son is marrying to the other ridge, that is our son. And his welfare is our concern. From the beginning, the intention of, of God was for this partnership and companionship. And that is why it is so sad. When a couple, either of them, is living in isolation and loneliness in marriage. Did you know? There is no greater pain than being lonely in your own marriage, where you feel hated. In fact, one of the prayers in document two, one of the prayers that we shall say tonight is when, uh, especially when one is taken as an enemy. Because one of the things that brings that loneliness is where there is suspicion and maybe where each one of them may have been branded as an enemy. It is not good that they remain alone. It is not good to allow loneliness to creep in your marriage. P, number two, is protection. And here, I'm going to look at the protection from both sides. I know we have been taught over the years that it is the work of the husband to protect the wife. That is very true. But tonight, I want to remind you that even wives protect their husbands. It is not the duty of the husband alone. And this is what the husband does. The husband protects the wife physically. He protects the wife emotionally. He protects the wife sexually. He protects the wife spiritually, he protects the wife theologically, he protects the wife financially, and he protects the wife casually. <clears throat> Those are the protections of the husband. Physically, and here physically we say that he protects the wife from from number one, from herself. Because the greatest enemy of the wife is herself. The second enemy of the wife is her husband. So he must protect her from himself. The third enemy of the wife is her children. So he must protect the, the wife from her own children. And number four, he protects the wife from others. Others, including the elements. That is what, we, well, that is, that is what, what constitutes physical uh, protection. A godly husband will always protect the heart of the wife. That is what constitutes emotional protection. A godly husband will not demand from his wife what she is not willing or unable to give. That is what constitutes sexual protection. And we are saying this because we are living at the age of sexual perversions. And we say, and we have taught this on various forums, that today, among the leading 
the leading uh, marriage um, breakers, the leading marriage breakers are the two we call the twin evils. The twin evils of pornography and the masturbation. Leading, actually they are the ones that are leading in breaking our marriages today. And these ones are now have led to the perversions I'm talking about. And today we can confess and it is good that we face this reality. The reason why we talked about uh, a husband um, protecting his wife sexually. Because today we have got husbands who are not straight. We call them gay marriages. A gay marriage, strictly speaking, not what we talk about, we have got in this world our Christian men, a man who has a wife and has children and has mpago wakado, a man. Na wanapumua tu? Na wako kanisani? Na wanapokea? Na wanakunya majia baraka? Wakigojia Yesu? But you see, really we will be talk about this. We will not talk about this that uh, in our churches we have men who are gay. Tunataka kunyamaza. And then we say, let us pray for our marriages. If it, they have enemies, which enemies? Unless we confront the truth and we talk about it from the pulpit to a biane ukweli. That even when men meet, when married men meet, they need to ask each other those questions. When you meet as married men, even the men who are here, married, mtegeneza jumuia na WhatsApp group, na muwe mukiulizana, do you masturbate? Wache kusema, eh, yu ni mwapo ya jatani, shirani mungani? Apana, apana, apana. Because one of the problems we have is that our Christian marriages are sexually dying because we don't want to speak about it. When we meet, we talk about beautiful things. Jesus is coming, and we know. <laughs> so, so, let us talk about the things that we never talk about because it is important. There is something we are calling nowadays mpagoakadoism. That's number one. And number two is the house help revolution. These two things, we have to discuss them. And of course now the twin evils. I am sure before God and his holy church, if I collect your phones here, out of every ten phones of men, chances are seven has a pornographic material. That before you sleep, you are likely to look at it than the Bible. Criminals here. <laughs> God is good <laughs> all the time. <laughs> God is seeing you. <laughs> so, <laughs> then from there we say that primarily every man must make a commitment to pray for his wife. That is what constitutes spiritual protection. We are told, which is true, that it is the duty of women to intercede for their marriages. Very true. But please don't forget that the husband is the leader of devotion in the family, number one. The husband is a spiritual mentor. The first spiritual mentor of the wife is the husband. And he is a, 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 a religious leader. Those three things. When every husband takes that, then his protection, uh, his spiritual protection is well constituted. A husband must be concerned by knowing the church that the wife attends and the quality of theology taught there. That is what constitutes theological protection. Because today, we have churches that are breaking marriages. So it is important. 
if, you, if there was a mistake in your family that you entered into a marriage with a pre-existing crack, then you have to be, to, to be careful. There are three pre-existing cracks in marriages that it is proper if you can avoid them, if you can't, learn and get yourself prepared. And I want to give you the three pre-existing cracks in marriages that ukigia done your marriage with any of the three cracks, you need Jesus with you all the time. And you need to be spiritually alert. Crack number one is when you have married from another race or nation. Being a Kenyan and you have married a Rwadiz. I am not saying that there is a problem there. I am only saying that is already a pre-existing crack. So please learn about the culture of Rwadiz. Did you marry at gunpoint? Are we communicating? Number two, pre-existing crack is when you marry from another tribe. Akisi marrying a taita. Kwa sayo ni gumu. God is good. <laughs> Unajua, we, 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 we consume this lie. We consume this lie that when we marry from other cultures, we become strong. That is a lie. <laughs> that is what we call political philosophy. In politics, you can consume that kind of wisdom which is fairly distorted. The truth is, in fact, even in the Bible, cross-cultural marriages was a war tool. One way of finishing a people was to, was, was to intermarry them. And that is why when, I am, when I'm teaching about cross-cultural marriages, I am very honest to people. And I tell you, if you are marrying from another tribe, please do the following. Number one, do some research about that, about that, uh, that culture on three, th three areas. How they view the, their children, how they view death, death, and number three, most importantly, what they hold, uh, what they hold um, sacred about their language. Please. And if you can, please, if you can, please, this is a mandatory. Before whatever kule, at least learn some language, that language. Um, we, 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 we gauge language up to five. So I'm not saying that you get maybe the proficiency of four. I'm only saying at least get 1.5. Know how to greet people in that culture. Know how to ask for something. Kujitetea. Na, <laughs> na, na, na kiasi. God is good. <laughs> Ni vizuri because eh, utabebo hapa, maybe because you are a gentleman, umetoka pade za kule ukabani. Na umeewa msiana kutoka kisi. <laughs> Alafu msiana kutoka kisi, anatoka kisi, anaeda ukabani. Anapata wa mama wale waze waze. Na unajua hawa wajui another in the language. Alafu unakaa tu hapo na unajua ukabani hausalimii wazee wanakusalimia. Sasa unakuja hapo na utiaji wako unawaambia sasa. Hiyo wana jido aka kanuku tumetolewa wapi? <laughs> Alafu anaanza kusokota the language and then you are just there smiling like a goat. At least at least know, know something about the language. Know who is supposed to greet who. And uoge, uoge kakika bakadogo na hao waze. They will respect you. Please. Don't keep on telling us that in Zijui, hawa wakaba, hawa wameru, hawa wazijui, hawa wazijui. Apana, every culture is sacred and it is good. If you understand it and you must enter there, please do some research. Please. Wacha kutuwabia reta, eh, sijui kwenye niliolewa, nilieta nikapata buwanagu, ako na mtoto kule. Because it is their culture. Lazima azaya kwao before wede. Ala! <laughs> now, situwabia because it is so wrong, 
It is so wrong to demonize a culture because of your stupidity. It is so wrong to demonize a culture because of your foolishness. It is so wrong. Whatever you found them doing, please try to understand. Why do they bury their people like that? Why do they say that if this happens, you cannot bury this? Please understand that. These are called pre-existing cracks. Crack number three. When you marry from another faith. In the event, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Hakuna kitugumu kama kuwa katika doa and you don't worship together. Because, remember, for religion is like politics and soccer to women. And remember, a woman can only discuss her faith and religion up to the age of 35. After the age of 35, ata ukikuja na yesu, na malaika na loribiri, umuabia atoka hiyo kanisa haida hiyo igine, utagojia yesu. Because as women advance in age, they become well-rooted religiously. As men advance in age, they become religiously indifferent. <laughs> you see now, if you have that truth, and if you have that knowledge, you will know that as both of you advance in age, itafika pari abapo, your wife will never listen to you. Because pastor said, and a war end to you, kama bibi yako, ako na kanisa ya pastor mtiaji na mjiga. Kwa hivyo, nakuwabia sijui hii kanisa yetu, na, na, and every time, it's like the teaching is that uh, anybody who does not belong to this faith, ni kama shetani. Unana inafika pahari, your wife is relating with you, eh, na kafiring, ye, ye, amepotea. Ata nyibo za nyanaibo when you are out. Chibua shetani, chibua. Chib... <laughs> Akitoka kanisa na kuja kuchibua shetani. Na niwewe tu hapo unashakamukia una, una ugali na namiwa. Are we, are we communicating? So if you can, the reason why I talked about the theological protection, if you made that mistake, and you are in that marriage, where you do not enter the same door with your wife, Please protect her theologically. Because if you are not careful, kuna makaniza yata kunyanganya bibi. Not that watamuwa, but watamfunza hivi kwaba, we unakaa shetani. By the time we are, you, are, you are calling parents, and you know parents cannot solve a religious marital problem. They can't. And then you think that because and you are in the kanisa, then you say that, uh, Nataka tuone, you are, you are pastor, we talk about our marriage. And already that pastor has taught your wife that you are a living goat and a walking Satan. <laughs> Alafu unatokelezea, te pastor tumekuja. Unazikia pastor anauliza, anauliza bibi yako, adia huyu? Kwanza tuobe. <laughs> Kwa nini wanaoba, watakasa hiyo please, shetani ya mefika. Ah, please. 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 Say many, please. please. <laughs> it is important that a husband will make sure that the wife is not in want as much as he can. That is what constitutes financial protection. It is important for a husband if he does not share cultural I, um, lineage with the, uh, with, the, with the wife to protect her from what we call retrogressive cultural practices. It is important. Now, allow me to say this because there is something that is happening nowadays and uh, we want to keep quiet and wait for Jesus. And it is some madness that is happening mostly in central Kenya where men have woken up and realize that their wives are not circumcised. 
na alimuoa na wamezaa na amekuweko na yeye na siyo ati anakuwa kana macho imefugwa now all of a sudden he has been given some new wisdom new wisdom there is something wrong with that it is the duty of a husband to protect the wife from those retrogressive cultural practices if your wife does not share your culture please protect her watu wa kwenu watasema lazima bibi yako afanywe hivi na hivi na hivi na hivi please protect her please because she does not share that culture hata kama umemuoa she is only associated with you through marriage not blood and you cannot be told that the problem you have as a husband can be solved by the blood of your wife it does not work that way the blood of human being does not work vertically it only works horizontally are we communicating and the only person whose blood worked vertically and horizontally was jesus ni damu yake ilikuja kutuokoa sote so you cannot be told by anybody that as a husband kuna shida kwenu kwa hivyo juu ya hiyo shida iko kwenu bibi yako aende atahiriwe shida ishe madness your wife does not share your blood she doesn't it is that true hello can't people tell each other the truth the only way that we can talk about generational dysfunction remember it is the blood that is coming from the generations up there coming down your wife is not in that lineage your wife is a product of horizontal procreation hello mnashikanisha oh thank you god is good <laughs> <laughs> so, how can a wife protect the husband? Number one, the wife protects and defends the husband by doing one critical thing to to protect and speak well about his name. It is the duty of a husband to protect the name of a, 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 of a wife to protect the name of the husband. It is so important because that constitutes everything about a man. We can later talk about ego in our, in our classes of psychology. It is not enough to pray for your husband. And you cannot pray for a man whose name you have been maligning. And we have said, let me give you principle number 2 of marriage. We always say that marriages precede children. Marriages precede children. So you cannot use children to solve your marital problems because watoto ni kama wageni, watakuja na wataenda. And that means it is not wise for a wife hata kama bwanake ni mbaya kiasi gani. It is not wise for you as a wife to speak ill of your husband to your children even if your husband has his own limitations please let your children see and then you guide them and always tell them who you ni baba yenu who you ni baba yenu and he is my husband leave him to me as a wife always speak kind words please do remember you can you can solve an injury in the marriage uh, problems but you cannot solve a very unkind and uncivil word you spoke to your husband because he may never forgive you for that so when you have when you are having your 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 strains kindly choose the word that you you you, you use evaluate your friendships it is important I'm saying this because there are some women who can form some friendships that can make them later devalue their husbands and maybe even break their marriages. So if your husband has a problem with some women or men you are keeping as friends, please evaluate them. And if it is possible and it is possible and paramount, please drop them 
for the sake of your marriage, it is important. Forgive your husband. In fact, we say that uh, the other principle of marriage, zinajiteta zenyewe, ni hii, that marriage is not a prize-giving event, but a journey, but a sacrificial journey of two perpetual forgivers. Principle number three of marriage. Marriage is not a prize-giving event, but a sacrificial journey or sacrifice offering journey of two perpetual forgivers. And finally, as a wife, to, build your, to, to, to protect your, your husband, build your home. Don't break it. I know we have women who are breaking what their husbands have built. Proverbs 14, verse 1, we say, A wise woman builds her house, but with her hearts, the foolish one tears hers down. Proverbs 14, 1. P number 3 is providence from both sides. And we say that when husband and wife work together, it is not just the duty of a husband to provide. We are in a new generation. It is important that both work for the providence of the family. P number four, procreation. And here we are talking about raising a godly generation. It is the duty of a husband and a wife to make sure that they raise a godly generation. P number five, prevention. Prevention. And what are we saying here? As a husband and as a wife, please prevent your struggles from harming your marriage. What are your struggles as a man? What are your struggles as a, as, as, as a, as a wife? Prevent your struggles from harming your marriage because the struggle of a husband or a wife can bring their marriage down if not well managed. P number six is pleasure. Enjoy your marriage. Marriage is not a rehearsal for perpetual domination. You are not in marriage for tears. You are not in marriage to, to, to die of a, a marital related diseases. No, it is not right. In fact, I always say, instead of, instead of being in a marriage that will kill you because of depression and other things, it will be better you live alone. So, it is the duty of a husband to make sure that the wife is enjoying the marriage. And the duty of a wife to make sure that the husband again enjoys that marriage. Number seven is performance. P number seven is performance. And performance is the gains, the collective gains of husband and wife in terms even of value teaching. And of course, as it were, a mentoring their children. Mentorship is very, very important. Number eight, preference of the parents. Now here, I'll say something good about them and something negative. But I want to say this to all the married men and women and those aspiring to get married, please listen to your parents. Your parents may not be as educated as you are, but they have the benefit of experience and of course age. I know, I know there are some parents who are working so hard to break their children's marriages, but largely, 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 our parents have something to say that can help build our marriages. Please listen to them. Do not demonize them. Do not trash their wisdom. They may not be as educated as you are, but please listen to them. P number nine, the power. Power of choices. Power of choices. Dear married men and women, the choices you make today might come one day to haunt you. Choices has power. We were told this on Sunday. Choices has power. So look at the choices that you are making. Because of their power, your marriage may be strong or not strong. P number 10 is perfecting the imperfect. Perfecting the imperfect. And what are we saying here? We are saying that marriages 
For marriages to work, they must be founded on the rock that is Jesus Christ. He who perfects the imperfect couples. So every day, the husband and wife pre uh, present themselves to Jesus Christ for perfecting. And we say, every marriage, every marriage that is guided and led by Jesus Christ is forever strong. P number 11 is putting on, putting on the scars of your partner with honor. And this is what we say. If you know that your husband has some weakness, the weaknesses of your husband, those are your scars. Carry them with honor. We always say that, put them like a badge of honor. If you know that your, has, your wife has some weaknesses, please don't use them to malign her name. Don't do what we call jabbing. Jabbing in marriage is where you know the failings and the weakness of your spouse and you use them to dehumanize them. It is called jabbing. Such a bad thing in marriage. You have known each other. Please let your partner's weaknesses be your badge of honor and you carry it. If people say something against your husband or your wife, please don't allow. Never be in a sitting where your spouse is being discussed negatively. Please never. If you go home and your brothers and your sisters want to discuss your wife, tell them, that is my wife. I know her weaknesses and I love her the way she is. There is nothing as dehumanizing as a husband sitting down with his siblings and the parents to discuss the wife. If you ever want to know as a husband that you are a fool, it is the day you have a sitting to discuss your wife, Nahayuko. And when she is there, she is being insulted by your brothers and sisters, and you are just there. Umenyamaza tuka machura. And then if she complains, unawabie, no, uh, leave them alone. Do you know uh, you can be very unlucky, very unlucky, and I'm talking to, 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 to some wives in this country. You can be very unlucky if you are married to a man who is perpetually in the pocket of the mother. We call them mother's boys. Mother's boys have no brain of their own. Akirizao zinabebo na mamazao. So for them, mpaka mam aseme. Tutaham marini to lose a mom. Tutanunu a new barini to lose a mom. Tutazarini to lose a mom. Kiragitu ni mom. To the extent, mamake anakuja kwako ama uneda kule anakuharas. And the best your husband can do, ni go kuabia, and go to my mother and you apologize to her. Apologize a what? She terrorized you. And this gentleman, I don't, I, don't, I don't know whether he's a gentleman, this gentleman did nothing. And then after you have been harassed, then he tells you, go and apologize to her. My dear gracious ladies, if that is your husband, yours is a terrorist. <laughs> terrorist. It will be better you are married in Mogadishu. <laughs> or Afghanistan. God is good. Because that is setting your wife up, which is so wrong. The same also can happen when you set your husband up. Maybe you know that your mother has never loved your husband. Or your dad has never loved your husband. Or your brothers or sisters have never accepted him. And therefore, you give them leeway to discuss him in your presence. And you are saying nothing. Unasema, ayo uyo bwanako, ee anaka mjiga. Unasema, by the way. <laughs> Unasema, by the way, na unarudi kwake. You must be very unfair to yourself. Unabiwa na watu wako ya kwa babu wanako ni mbaya, na unarudi kwake, and then when you go there, you go back with an attitude. The guy has done nothing wrong. 
Only that you have been sent by your brothers and sisters to go and communicate. And because you cannot tell them directly what they said, because when you say, you just find a way of communicating the same. Where's your... Where's your... You take so long to understand small things. Like because you cannot tell him because you don't get things easily. And but that attitude was not there until you went home. Such that every time you go home and you come home, you come back to your own family, you come with an attitude sold to you by your father. If, even when you want to, to do investment, it is only your father who can say when, where you can invest. Arafu wewe unaanza kusema eh you know my dad alikuwa amesema pro box ni mzuri tunaweza kuwa tukibebea mifugo unachidwa who has married you is it your father or me na hakuna kitu gumu kama kuwa na bibi mwenye anakuwa driven by the father hiyo ni gumu because hata ile siku utafikiria sio ati kumchapa utafikiria alafu usimame anasema oh okay nataka kuniua okay <laughs> So you have stood to kill me. Immediately, Babaki and Apigo Simu. And there are some men who have no manners. The guy drives to your home and carries the daughter home. Who is your wife? What would you do if your father-in-law comes for his daughter? Na uko tu? Na unapumua? Eh, mnaonaje? Eh... Let us not discuss that. <laughs> but there is truth. Let me tell you the truth. You know, most of my years, I, I have spent all, most, of, most of my priesthood years in marriage therapy. Let me tell you the truth. It is happening today. There are those families where dads are harassing their sons-in-law because hataki mtotowake abiwe kitu. And maybe he has raised a very lazy human being. Kana katu hapa kama sugura. She just want to look good, but do nothing. How can you look good and you cannot do nothing? Kwa ni unataka utegenezwe kama kama gurue? God is good. <laughs> it is not possible. You want to be a good wife and you want to be happy. You don't want to even to work. You, you don't even want to cook. That you are only good at boiling water. <laughs> Anything else when you cook, it is a disaster. Ukipika ugari, kuna duru huko. Ukipika mokimo, inakaa kama matope. Ukipika rice, ni uji. Chapo zako, ziko na seven corners. <laughs> Alafu, ukizikura, unazikia, zina crack. Ni kama unakula bao. It is even good. I know not everybody is a good cook. But kuna, kuna online classes. Learn something. You can't, don't tell us that. You know, me, I'm good at, 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 at porridge. Only. And your husband does not take porridge. And the last time you took your porridge yourself is when you gave birth 15 years ago. Ay. Arafu nasema, no, ananisukuma sana, anataka niwe nikipika, kwa hindi ulikuwa naolewa ukurwe. <laughs> eh, are we communicating? Yes. Are we communicating? Yes. Because it is good to, to tell each other the truth. And, and we remind, and the problem is, when you have such a wife, and she is supported from home, hakuna kitu gumu kama, kuwa na bibi kichwa gumu, and she is supported from home. The mother and the father subscribes to her philosophy. Philosophy ya ukor na utiaji. Ata na kutusi, pole pole tu. Na huna pahali pa kueda. Because if you call the father, anakuwa bia, eh, wacha kuzubua mtoto wagu. Unashidua, ndi mtoto wako ama ni my wife. Nona hapa, mtu nazakasirika, uh, nini? 
Uh, God is good. <laughs> finally, 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 P number 12 is prosperity for a dignified living. Prosperity for a dignified living. Dear husband and wives, I told you during the family deliverance, poverty is not a blessing. Poverty is not an inheritance. Please work. There is nobody who inherits poverty. You can only be poor if you have chosen. Please don't choose poverty. Don't stay in a family where there is nothing to eat, life is so degraded, and you have got the capacity. Please, do not convince yourself that you are under a curse. You cannot be under the curse of poverty unless you have chosen to. It is true. You may have come from a family that is not well endowed financially. But that does not mean that the poverty of your mother and your father becomes your poverty. No, please. You never know why they were poor. Maybe they were not very well exposed, academically and otherwise. Lakini we were shure. So please don't tell us that uh, me and my wife, we are poor because we both come from poor families. Apana, apana, apana. We talked about the 10 blessings that every child comes with in this family. Every child comes in this world with the 10 blessings. And blessing number 10 is prosperity. There is nowhere. In fact, in fact, Jesus did not like poverty. Because poverty actually is a social evil. And even, you don't even tell us that it's in the Bible. That the Bible says that uh, blessed are the poor, they'll see God. Which God? Could a difference between evangelical poverty and social poverty? Yakon is social poverty, it is not a curse. It's a choice for you to die poor. Wacha kutuzomea Bible hapo. Natuwabi ati, eh, happy are the poor, they will see God. Utakufa huta muona. Because the Bible does not tell us not to work so that we can be poor, we see God. Apana, the Bible tells us that we have our properties, but we do not see them. We see the giver. We do not glorify our material wealth. We glorify the giver. That is what we call evangelical poverty. Otherwise, each one of you is entitled to a dignified living. Let me tell you, if you live very poor and you had the capacity of working, you are eating so poorly, you dress so poorly, when you die, you don't become a martyr. Tutakuja mazishi ya mjiga. Mtu mwenye hakufanya kazi, kazi yake tutikuwa kupepashu zuruwari hii dunia, doing nothing and dying poor ahurumiwe. Hata kanisani, hakuna kitu nafanya. Kwenye unasomesha watoto, haulipagi school fees. Ukona deni everywhere. Shule, ukona deni. Kanisani, ukona deni. Shopping center, ukona deni. Hata moshari, kuna deni. Kwa ni weni inagani? Ukiwa mtoto, tukakubeba. Ukiwa mtumuzima, tunakubeba. Ukikuva, tukubebe. Bona ulizariwa? Hello? Hello. Ati, you have a curse? No. Let me tell you something now as your priest and servant. You cannot be under the leadership of Jesus Christ and the lordship of Jesus Christ and at the same time live under a curse. You cannot coexist in Christ. That is why we say it is written in Mark 16. In my name, in his name, we break those dysfunctions. Hello? So if we know who Jesus is, and we have got the connection, we will not allow the shadows and the brokenness of them the days of our forefathers. Sauti ya mababu haipasu ikuwa sauti yako leo. Mababu aliogea. Lakini kuna yesu na ameogea. Aha. Na amesema, in my name, mababu walisema, walisema uh, uko wenyu hamtaza. Mababu hawapeanagi watoto. Mababu hawapeanagi wealth. Mababu hawafanyagi hivi na vire. Jesus Christ does. 
That is why hata watu wakisema nini kama Yesu amesema utabarikiwa utabarikiwa. But again, you must have that special connection. Dear men and women in marriage, please stop glorifying poverty. Poverty is not a good thing. When we are journeying with young boys and girls to prepare them for marriage, one of the things that we tell them to talk about from the beginning is, is money. And even when they have money, how they will be assisting others in their money. Please, please, please stop glorifying poverty. Did you know, those of you who are good researchers, because I know you are doing comparative religion, Mwede, Mwede, Mwede Library, Mutafute Koran. If you read Koran back to back, Koran does not talk about poverty, by the way. It doesn't. There is no way a Koran talks about poverty. Na muko hapa, nasema mutaona uso wa mugu. You are a catechist. Na munasema ati, happy are the poor. We see God. Which God? Kwa ni mugu alihama, ama kwa shaina. Hey, God is good all the time. It is the will of God that our husbands and wives live a dignified life. If there was one thing that we can pray for is that all our husbands, all our wives will live a dignified life. May it be so for you and for your generations to come. Thank you and God bless you. We profess our faith.